Will Robinson here from Robinson's Auto Tools and Time.com. Welcome back, guys. 2007 Toyota Tundra. How would you like your front brakes to go from that to this? Follow along. Well, of course, you're going to want to start by taking the wheel off. He was having pulsation in his brakes and he's getting ready to go camping. He, he tows a camper with the truck and he wanted to make sure everything was good. Squeaking, pulsation, so most likely the, the um, rotors are not only a little warped, in addition they're most likely glazed. And then if you come in here you also see we have an extreme amount of rust. Now you, most likely you get away with using these calipers again. However, the owner opted to just replace them. And in some cases, you're just better off. He already had one caliper fail, so I told him, showed him the condition that these were in, uh, and told him the challenges we'll have with cleaning them up and whatnot. And so he just opted to replace them. So we're just going to replace everything: rotors, calipers, hardware kit, and brakes. I'm also going to make him aware that the brake lines are starting to get a little iffy. Okay, so this is not like your traditional car caliper. It uses pins, it's not a floating caliper per se. Brake pads float, but it has four piston caliper, so you don't have the movement as you would normally see with pins and whatnot. So we have a 10 millimeter line wrench. And a lot of times these will these will fight, yeah. So far we're doing pretty good. I'm just going to give it a little shot of penetrating oil. Work it back and forth. Unless you want to replace the lines right away, if you rust this step, you will twist them right off. Almost guaranteed on something this rusty. She's actually all the way out. You can either just pop that metal clip out, or you take and can remove that retaining bolt. If it feels like it's going to be too much of a bear. You do not want to break it. It feels like she's going to be just fine. Okay, okay, 12 millimeter. All right. So what that just allowed us to do is take and remove the brake line out of the way without manipulating it. Because as I said, we're going to come back here at a later time and revisit these brake lines. Next, we have a 17 millimeter swivel. And if you look behind here. You will see we have one retaining bolt here and one more retaining bolt down at the bottom. This is the easy part because we're replacing everything. Abracadabra. Pretty much, that's the way we'll return it for decor. Next, we'll take and remove the rotor. These are in pretty good shape yet. Now, don't get me wrong, you can have them cut. However, there isn't that much difference in price. Now, what I like doing here, there's always a little bit of rust buildup. This one isn't so bad. I like to take and uh, just clean that down a little bit. Okay, so to get in tight, I have a few of these brushes, some coarse, some fine. This one happens to be a stainless stainless brush for TIG welding. It's no longer going to ever use, be used for TIG welding. Just take and hit that perimeter, I guess. You get the idea. And I just like to take a little bit of never sees. Just a small amount. Just like a thin film. Then you can put it on there and wipe it back off. Make a mess out of this situation. Why not? Okay, Tammy's already took and cleaned the new rotors. They come with a, a film on them for, you know, anti-corrosion. Okay, keep an axle nut or some, some larger nut uh, close by on the lift just to help hold you in place. It, it works real well. 
Okay, next we're gonna grab the new calipers. I cleaned up the bolts on the wire wheel. And I got a little anises on them. As you've seen, there's no no pins that you have to uh, worry about. So we're just gonna get one started. Just run one down until it touches. And next one you can pretty much drive home. Okay guys, next we're gonna take and pop out this plug. Kind of educational class going on in the background. So you hear my phone constantly going on and off with the vagina boobies. I'm just gonna put this up in place. Freaking chatty caddies over there, huh? Yeah. Probably Keith or Eric needing my help. I should probably check on it. Go pick her go home. Okay, so take this, move that clip like so. I'm going out towards you. Out towards you. This has a dual piston caliper, right? So we know we gotta flop a little grease here. Right about there where that piston's gonna land. What sucks a little bit is that dirt will collect. So I don't usually put a small film. This one does not have this squeaker on it, so that'll go in there just like so, right? This one does have the squeaker on it. I'm trying to get any grease on the pad surface itself. Now we'll go in there like so. Okay, so if you know right about where they're gonna rest. Place a little bit on there like so. See what I mean, Jelly Bean? Ah, oh, what did I just forget, guys? Well, we forgot something. You guys forgot to remind me. So I'm gonna have to pull this bottom clip back out. Goes in here just like so. Okay. And these go in there. Hopefully Tammy's catch capture in there for me. Right there. Does that make sense? Then we take this one. Just like that. Make sense? Mm -hmm. So it's like your cotter pin, per se. It's your retaining pin to keep these from coming all the way out. Make sense? No longer can you come out. Essentially, that's it. We gotta bleed them. However, as far as the installation of the brakes and the rotors and the caliper, that is essentially it, and that'll last you a very long time. So what I'm gonna do next is uh, just go over those back retaining bolts. I'm gonna take a 17 millimeter. Oh yeah. Four of the others was perfect. Yep, I'm good. I have plenty of videos out there on bleeding the brakes, but if you wanna hang out, I'm gonna bleed them before I put the wheels on. Okay, we're gonna do the traditional pump, then hold, and break the bleeder loose style bleeding method. A lot of you guys are familiar with this. I've showed it many times. Um, if you had the backs apart, start with your farthest wheel. Uh, it's, it's just a practice. Is there a big difference in doing so? With a dual action master cylinder, I, I don't know. It's, it's just one of those things. However, I'm just going to demonstrate on this one caliper. 
All right, pump it up, Tammy. Hold it down. Yeah. You can use a, a socket and a ratchet. What will happen is the fluid will shoot in and it won't spray all over the place, but it'll, it'll run down. Or you can use a tube. There's a, a couple good ways of doing it. I should probably do it in a nice way. Hold up, Tammy. I'm not going to use the vacuum pump to do this. However, I am going to use the setup to capture the brake fluid. All right, pump it up. Hold it down. Yeah. Pump it up. I didn't get nada out of that. Hold it down. I hope we're starting to get something. Of course you want to check your reservoir before you start to make sure it's full. This one has a pretty large reservoir on it. And we have plenty of fluid. Pump it up. Hold it down. Yeah. Pump it up. Starting to get a pedal? Yeah. Hold it down. Pump it up. Hold it down. Yeah. Tell you what, I'm going to jump around, keep repeating this process on the remaining three wheels since I did have the back side apart. And I hope you see how this is done, and it's relatively easy and straightforward. Hold it down. Yeah. Oh yeah, I'm not seeing any air. Hold it down. Yeah. Ooh, got a lot of nice air to there. Pump it up. Hold it down. Yeah. Much better. Okay, if you think you have any grease on the rotor, just take and spray it down with some brake cleaner. I want to go spraying the pads because you're going to take up all the grease you put on it. It'll evaporate off soon enough. However, now I'm going to take and reinstall the wheels and we'll take her for a test drive. 